Hello my crafty friends and welcome to my YouTube channel Corinne Crafts. Got a nice quick project for you today. Here is the card. Isn't that stunning? It's all about masking, stenciling and yeah, creating a gorgeous background. Two colours, that's the only thing I've used. Two coloured inks and we've used it on the backgrounds. We've stamped with it, we've stenciled with it, we've ink blended with it, we've coloured in the butterfly with it two colours and obviously the black but a little bit of masking as well really easy to create I'm going to show you how to do it now to achieve the look we're going for today I thought I would start with just two ink pads I'm using water reactive ink pads but you could use whatever you wanted to you could use your Tim Holtz um, distress ink pads oxide ink pads whichever one you want um, or I mean you could use any one you could use quick dry inks it's entirely up to you so I've got a piece of card and as I've shown you before the size of this card is five and three quarter inches square and that means that I get two out of a sheet of A4 there's nothing more complicated than that that is how my sizing came about so that I could get two pieces out of one piece of card now I have marked some points on here that are oh I've got some pencil marks here I need to just rub out uh, so those marks are just under they're about seven eighths of an inch in I started with a bit bigger for the first one I did and I didn't like it so I've got a bit smaller and then all I've done is I have got some mask it you know you 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 stamping mask it um roll so i'll show you that's my roll just there and i've just cut a piece off and then i've just torn it into two so I've, i mean i've got a nice neat cut edge there but i've got a nice irregular torn edge and that was the whole point is i wanted an irregular torn edge so all i'm going to do is i'm going to put it roughly because it's a torn edge i'm just going to put it roughly where those marks are don't worry if it's not too exact and then i can do this one with another piece oh I'll, I'll take this one down here because it's a bit wibbly wobbly see you know you can move it around to make it fit it's entirely shit ah that one's gonna be oh i like that one for the bottom one could that was silly because you could have had any as the bottom i could have just turned it around i wasn't thinking there put that one on so i'm just pressing it down at the side and then i'm going to turn it round and do oh where's my line gone there it is right okay and I'm going to put that one just there. So if I lift it up so that you can catch the light, if I show you on that side, I've just masked off just shy of an inch border around the outside. And I've got a nice irregular square in the middle. So that's nearly where I'm at. So the only other thing I wanted to do was still with the masking tape. I've taken a die, just a, just a flourish die. I'm sure you've got plenty of these and I've cut it out again I've cut it out of the mask it tape this is just um, if anybody have you ever seen it's cut tidy I know you can get this from carnation crafts nowadays um, it's just um, helps release your dyes but all I did actually is I stuck my mask it tape on to it um, and then die cut through it so that it didn't it didn't um, I didn't want to put it onto some paper because I found it was sticking too much so I've got this lovely flourish and all i'm going to do is i'm going to cut cut it into pieces so i've got this lovely bit here that i'm going to put in one corner let's come round like that can you see and just popping it on so i'm just masking off some more that's now flourish shape oh where's that gone i've just twisted it just untwist that there we go so just pop that on and pop that on that side too just there we go so this flourish has come it's masked on the card but it's also come onto the border and where's that other piece that i cut there so this one i'm actually going to cut into two just like that and i can pop one on just there you see every time you do this you're going to get a different effect aren't you because you depends how you cut it and how you stick it on which is what i love unfortunately this isn't really a reusable bit um yeah there we go so i've got a flourish at the bottom corner and a flourish at the top just burnish it down it's only mask it tape so it's not going to um be too pressurized right i'm just going to grab myself a mat to work on too so you can see just there and i'm going to put down some yellow so this is honeypot 
and I'm going to put down fuchsia. They're quite strong ones. Um, I find I like the effect of the strong colours and I've got two um, blending brushes. So let's go, I'm going to go with the pink first. Pick it up. You can always dab it onto there if you feel like it's too much and then I'm just going to blend randomly across here. Random is quite hard, but we can we can try and get some random. And actually using two colours as well isn't the easiest thing. So ba you can see I've managed to get some nice patches with the pink, but the yellow will all sort of be um, joined up. But that's fine. We can work with this. It'll work beautifully. I just love this colour combination. I love it with a bit of blue in as well. It's a really classic one. But I just wanted to see what I could do with two colours. So I'm going to go in quite heavy because I'm going to bleach some of the colour out. So sort of go over heavy to begin with. I know normally we say less is more or don't oh, don't put too much on because if you do, you can't take it off. But this is one of those times when actually I can take it off. So I'm going to take that just there. And I'm going to just come in with the pink again. Just see straight away blending it out blending it out there and I'm just going to just try and blend those can you see how the colors just oops blend into each other there we go if you want like I say if you wanted to put a third color on fourth color it's entirely up to you um I just like oh that I've lost that bit there it's come up but never mind it's fine right so once I've done that Oh, um, yes, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of water on here. So I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my hand and just spray a couple of drops. I like to, if I spray it direct, I get a mist, but I actually want droplets. So how much this bleach is bleaches out all depends on how long you leave that water on. So I'm just going to just be a good girl and get all cleaned up there. Well, that's just working. Can you see the bleach marks? It's only water, but it will bleach out. And look, if I see that, can you see when we pat down? So this will stop that from happening now. So we can just pop that on there. And you can see we've now created some lovely effects. I'm just going to dry that off before we do the next bit. So just bear with me. So I've got that more or less dry. Now the next bit, I could lift up the masks if I wanted to or not I'm not going to just just quickly found this I'm just going to get a little bit of color I'll just clean that off I'm just going to actually stencil through a little bit of color on this bit as well just randomly just through here you can just just see it in the background oh I like that let's come onto here that might show up a little bit more because of the bleach effect Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Let's go with a few circles. I'm not seeing that very well, so let's come on with the pink. Don't want too much. Just a little bit of the circle. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, that's coming off to where that line is. Don't worry, we won't see that. And a little bit up there. All right, that'll do for that. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab my stamp block. And a good thing to do is just put a little mat underneath. So pop that under there. And then I'm going to grab a couple of stamps. So just randomly grab stamps that you've got. I think you've seen me use these ones a couple of times recently. So I'm going to grab the script and put it onto my block. I'm going to get the same pink. I'm still using the same colours and I'm just going to stamp it onto the edge. I'm not going over too much and I'm just going to stamp it with that mask on. Now when I did my practice one I took it off but for this one I'm going to leave it on. And you can see on there it hasn't actually caught there but that's fine i might actually do one more with that and then we can see i'm doing pink on top of pink but it works press that down you can see just like that and then the other one i've, I've found that I quite like the look of was i had some numbers let me grab those you can see just a number one and let's come in with some yellow and then we can again go over that mask make sure it's pressed down nice and firm would I don't know how that's going to look not yet that's quite exciting isn't it and then I'm going to do one more 
just across here. It's all about building up your backgrounds and you can make it so personal. There we go. That's looking lovely. OK, so once we've done that, the only other bit I want to do is I'm going to grab my sophisticated um, paint station and I'm I've got a couple of sprays. I'm not going to spray them. I'm going to tap them on. So I'm just going to grab that. Anything that you can find. I think I did it with my poker tool when I was practicing, but I'm just going to just do it a little bit like that. Less is not too much at all. I've got a sparkly one. I didn't have a yellow. This green was the nearest I had. I only want a little bit just to break it up. There we go. And that now will be my background. I think it looks amazing. So I'm just going to give that another quick blast back in a minute. Then we'll show you what we do for the next bit. Not perfectly dry, but it's fairly dry. So I'm going to grab my poke tool. I'm going to lift these up. Now I've added water. So you might find that you need to go in in a minute and take off any bits. Oh no, that one's come off nicely. Look at that. It is very white. If you want to get rid of some of that, you can, you know, go in with a little bit of ink if you find it. It feels too white, but we've not finished yet. So don't worry. It's not the finished look. And then, oh, there we go. So we've got those effects. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp across the bottom. So I'm still going to come back in with my rocker block. And I've got some flowers. So let me just, right, let me work this one out. Do I want to do, oh, I've got a couple here. So I've got this one here, I might do two, yes I think I will. Right, so I'm going to leave all the masks on at the side, like I say, I work this out as we go along um, and put that onto there. Now everything is dry, so I am using my Memento ink pad because I just like the blackness of it, but you can use whatever you want. Now you could just do one stamp across the middle that was going to give me quite a bit at the side so I'm, i am going to try and get in with two so i'm just going to ink up with this now this is a water-based ink pad so you do need to make sure your um thing is dry if not actually what else have i got that might be a bit better i've got oops, dropping them all ah uh, there we go my archival ink pad that'd probably be better let's do that one because then that's probably going to be better because I have used water reactive things on right now. So what I want to do is I'm going to lift that up. Now I can see I've got a line coming down here. So I want to come right down that line. So I'm going to just bring that up there and then stamp. Now I could actually just repeat this one and let it come off the side. But it's quite nice that this has got um, another smaller one. Um, so yeah. This will look absolutely gorgeous. So we put that one on. Then we can come in with the second one. Oh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, sorry. Put that on there. And then try and keep it to roughly the same height. And then I can just put that on, press. If you want to use a stamping platform, that would work equally as well. There we go. So that's come on really lovely. Now we can start to peel everything off. So that means that when I peel this off, I just love how you get this look, this effect at the side where this bit comes into the background and then out. But look at this, this sort of square that's not a square, you know, this background. So, I mean, you could put masking tape down, it's entirely up to you, but I just, you could have perfect lines. I love how that's given me those irregular lines. Really, really pretty. So we need something to go on there to decorate it. So I had a look around and I thought, right, that was, this is the edge of the A4 card. So when I cut off my two five and a quarters, I got this piece. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some ink. Now, a lot of people don't like doing colouring. They find they don't get the results that they want. So if you if you struggle with colouring, so I could have sh I could say to you, right, get a butterfly, get a dragonfly, get a whatever stamp you want, stamp it out and then colour it in with your pens. And some people say, oh, I don't like doing that. What say so they want an alternative? Well, this is a really easy way to do it. So you know the colours are going to match. 
because they're the exact same inks that we've used on um, our background. So I'm just going to, I'm putting them onto a piece of card. So I've just got the exact same colours. And then all I'm going to do is I found, gosh, I had a sheet of butterflies, any butterfly stamps that you've got. I'm going to stick that onto there. I'll get my archival again. I'll put that stamp, ink that up. Where's my little mat gone? I moved it out of the way. Put this back on the mat. There we go. Let's move that out of the way. And those bits. There we are. So you can see what I'm doing. Put that back onto there. And then I'm just going to get my butterfly and stamp over there. Just make sure it's pressed down nice and firm. And there we go. And look at that. He's coloured in absolutely naturally so this is um stamped without a die if you have one with a die that's even better and then all i did you can see on there is i just fussy cut it out you don't need to see me do that by hand but yeah i've just gone round with a pair of scissors and cut that out so i just think that looks really really lovely um such a pretty effect and you know it's going to match your card brilliantly so yeah we're doing really well so what we've got so far is we've got that and we've got that I think they go so well together so I think we should put it onto a card base so this was a card base for a seven inch envelope which I've just trimmed down the tiniest bit oh it's everybody hot isn't it warm at the moment I'm sat here I'm so warm um put that up there a bit so there we go it's tacky glue so you'll just have to excuse the, the state of me I am so warm it's been so warm at work today um, went out for a walk at lunchtime and whew, it was lovely but gosh was it warm so there we go so we're putting pink on I've just picked, picked pink you can trim out the center but if you look at that I just think that's a really good sort of match for that I love that background isn't that beautiful so pretty now I could go black onto the pink and then I could go white onto that and that looks lovely but you know me, I like to frame with white. And this was just in my scrap box, so I thought, oh, trim it down a little bit. It was just left over from another project. So I can put this one on. I can pop that on. Just there. An eighth of an inch border. There we go. All the way around. Let's just grab my cloth. Where the glue just seeps out a little bit we can just wipe it off because that's a great thing is if you use a water-based glue then it dries clear and you're able to remove it so then we can put this on next i love this because it's not too dimensional is it it just means that you can um then um it's easier for postage or however you want to do it so we can then do the next one just pop that on there just going to get the cloth all the way oh you see it moves but you can move it back it's only the narrowest of white borders but i just think it looks so much better i'm just going to get my it's my stamping pressure tool we can pop that over there blend all that glue out and then we can come in with this one now if you want to do it you could raise this or you could um put the black mat to this and then raise the black one with a very fine um, foam tape it's up to you um, as I said before this is watercolour card because of adding the water and doing so it does take quite a bit of glue I often find and you can put that on there and then now if you feel like it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy try putting attaching it with something like your red liner tape because then that will force it to be flat or the other thing you can do is um just get something like that and then put a block over the top i can't even see my stamping block but i've just put a stamping block over it for half for 10 minutes 10 minutes or so and that would be perfect okay so next we've got our butterfly as you've seen it's exact right colors to work so we can put him there and then we can put a little bit of glue on here what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop him like that i think 
so it's coming off oh, I've got a little bit of glue there while well, I second guessed myself and then what I might just do is grab a little bit of 3d glue and put it under the wings and then once it's dry it'll stop the wings from going flat so there we go a little bit of 3d glue just holds the wings up and it also helps stick it down as well there we go so many glues and adhesives aren't there they all have their own uses so let's come around like that i like that and then the last major bit that i'm going to do is i've got just a sentiment it's called choose happy it's just one of mine cut out from one of my sheets i need to get some more sheets with some more things i need to have a look at Lou's, see what she's got put that on the center just like that and then i'm going to grab some water droplets now i could actually do black but i just just as i was getting this ready i thought clear ones would look lovely because they're not too intrusive are they they're just they're just going to add a little bit of something trying not to get me in straight lines anywhere um, without adding too much to them to the project i've got four can't have four need five so let's go there there we go and that is it i think that is so pretty isn't that lovely so we've done some masking around the edges to create the shape we've masked off a couple of little bits there which i know i've covered most of that up which is a bit silly but never mind um i've done some stenciling i've done some stamping we've created an image at the bottom coming into the card um yeah i really like that really simple um but keeping the colors the same by taking the same colors into the butterfly but not trying to color it with pens just show you how easy that is to achieve i hope you like that that was nice and quick and simple wasn't it well posting this on saturday um i normally post on sunday but this week i won't be posting on sunday because on monday we'll be launching the august color challenge my monthly color challenge and it's a bit of a special one i have got a collab going off with our lovely lou collins and she's offered me an amazing amazing prize for the end of august for um me to award to someone who um yeah who takes the colors and creates a beautiful project so if you like that that's some colors not the colors that we've got for august i can truthfully say that um so keep watching please come back and see what on offer on monday because i don't normally post on monday but i do when it's a color challenge it's always the first monday of the month see what's happening and yes um i have really enjoyed creating that i hope you do i'll put some links down at the bottom um and yeah if you can click on any of those and there's also a link to my buy me a coffee page um anything you can do i'd be extremely grateful and i can't wait to see you again on monday so have a fantastic weekend i hope you manage to stay cool and i will see you at the beginning of next week so until then happy crafting my friends and i'll see you shortly bye for now